Hey everybody, today's episode of the Weekly Comic Pulls is brought to you by Philadelphia Construction Workers, knocking out your electricity since 10 o'clock this morning. Yeah, truly lovely. Guaranteed to knock out your electricity or your money back guaranteed. So we're going to try and get through this pretty quickly so that uh, that doesn't happen while we're recording. Hey guys, welcome to the Cosmic Panel, where today we're going to be doing our weekly pulls for October 4th. We're already in October. Um, pretty crazy. And now it seems like we're fully back into the swing of things. New books, new issues, new indie stuff, new DC stuff, new uh, Marvel stuff. So I'm very excited. Um, pretty packed week. Um, Elias, what's your first pick? My first pick for this week is going to be Poison Ivy number 15. Um, I was very pleased with last issue. I think it's bringing us back into a regular uh, momentum for Poison Ivy, um, moving forward everyone's story and doing so very well. Um, a new villain has come to uh, threaten Ivy and um, very interesting design. Um, yeah. I was a little disappointed it wasn't Mr. Bloom himself. But um, nonetheless, this looks very interesting and sort of a mystery for her to solve. And um, yeah, just... Uh, trucking along very nicely yeah um the new villain design looks sick um i'm very very hyped to see where we're gonna go um but definitely agree it seems like after night terrors and after the detour now that we have a clear path um we're finally getting poison ivy back at uh full steam ahead and basically we're having her interact with all these different gotham characters which i loved her interaction with batman loved harley's interaction with batman um, loved all the different uh, villains that they're intersecting with. Like this issue, they're supposed to apparently interact more with Killer Croc, which is really cool. I like that the villains almost have like a camaraderie. <laughs> they're like, they all deal with Batman, so they're all just like, yeah, we, we know what we're going through. Don't worry about it. And it's like, it's it's something that I feel like we don't usually see with the villains. Yeah, definitely. And I like this, uh, this deal that uh, Ivy has struck with Croc and... Uh... I think they would make a cool duo, so I'm happy to see that continue. Yeah. What's first up for you? First up for me is the Joker, the man who stopped laughing, number 11. Um, last issue had a climactic reveal. Um, we finally learned who the other Joker is. Basically, what happened is um, there was a henchman. Um, he didn't put on his mask properly when they were, when they were doing stuff, and he got gassed with, la uh, with Joker gas. Um, he did die. So what Joker did was he brought him to Professor Pig and asked him to make him exactly like him. And um, basically what they did was they would do that to fuck with people um, so that when he's in another city, he's also in Gotham and he never leaves Gotham technically. And so they were kind of co-owning the name. And then after a while... Um, one of the the imposter basically killed one of uh joker's henchmen without his permission and he's like why oh well it doesn't matter we're both joker and he's like i'm bored of you and he just shoots him in the head <laughs> and then um the last panel is basically him still he laughs which means that he's still alive so we now know that one of the jokers was a henchman that got turned into the joker uh horribly basically had to give up his life with no choice and was basically brainwashed to be the Joker um, while the other one was still the original Joker, which I I honestly think this is a more solid way to do the three Joker storyline if they were going to do that. This is, this is like a way more interesting way because it's... Joker would do some shit like this where he's just like, he stumbles into something. He's like, you know what? I'm going to experiment with this just to see, just for shits and giggles. Instead of it being like he makes purposefully jokers, um, I think it's this is significantly better. Um, but yeah, now now we're getting into the f climactic battle. Um, only two more issues, this and then the next issue, and then this is done. Um, this has been phenomenal, though. I've really been enjoying the series. Yeah, very cool. All right, next up for me is going to be Blue Beetle number two. First issue was very strong. I was very, very impressed good. with it. Um, the art is fantastic. It's the right vibe for Jaime and everybody involved. Yeah, this is kind of getting right into right into it, following 
the uh, graduation day miniseries. This is going full force. Last issue ended with supposedly Ted being killed by um, what I'm going to call a uh, Red Beetle. Um, I don't know if they're bringing back the Red Beetle adversary from New 52. Looks like it's a new character. And um, yeah, so very strong start and uh, good cliffhanger to leave us on. Yeah, no, really good. Um, they're calling them Blood Scare, which is a pretty cool name, I feel like. Um, but yeah, no, a phenomenal fight. The The art is very kinetic. Um, we got more updates on how Jaime is doing um, with his friends and with the other Beatles. Um, honestly, just a phenomenal start. I'm really excited to see where this is going to go because honestly, um, graduation day was really good. It was very fun. And this has picked up right where that left off. Yeah. Next up for me is Red Goblin number nine. Issue eight was crazy. Um, we finally see Normie just give in. Um, he is now officially the Red Goblin. Um, he is just fully given to... I, would, I wouldn't say Rascal's influence because really he's the one influencing Rascal. But his inner darkness and... Um, I'm excited to see where this is going to go because now Dylan's going to have to, uh, Dylan Brock is going to have to interfere and do something. Um, because he gave Rascal to Normie and, uh, Normie now has corrupted Rascal to the point where, um, Rascal's now just bloodthirsty. And now we know that Rascal is actually a fraction of the Bedlam Eddie, uh, symbiote fusion. Um, time displaced which is very interesting um, interesting twist there yeah um, but yeah Red Goblin it's been surprisingly strong series uh, this is issue 9 it was only supposed to be a mini series at first like 4 or 5 issues um, so I mean I'm very surprised yeah this is the second um, to last issue apparently and um, oh okay but it's it's done it's done some some cool stuff I think um, pulling from the old Spider-Man mythos, um, you know, uh, of villains and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, been, been very strong. Genuinely would have never, uh, believed if you had held a gun to my head, that Red Goblin would be one of the standout series <laughs> of Marvel in this past year. But yeah, better this... than, better than a lot of the summer symbiote stuff. I mean, this and misery were, yeah. were both stronger than carnage stronger than i think venom right now stronger than death of venomverse so also uh we got the hint of uh, liz finally interfering with uh with normie so that that'll be interesting to see them meet um and liz kind of yeah. be like you can't be like this you have to be better yeah that will be a necessary interaction that i'm excited to see next up for me is going to be peacemaker tries hard number six just want to give it one final praise before it ends and this is the final issue um again very strong series um the art is perfect for this vibe um the uh writing has been funny but still advancing the plot um kyle starks doing very well with um finding a meld i would say between comedy and uh seriousness in couple series now obviously he's also doing marvel unleashed so yeah this is the final issue and at the end of last issue um living brain has or the brain sorry has transferred his consciousness into chemo um which is pretty crazy um but i love me some chemo so yeah i'm excited to see this wrap up yeah um, also, we got to see Peacemaker fight against different clone versions of of Deathstroke, which was cool. Um, Teen Deathstroke was very funny. Yeah, very funny. Um, but yeah, now we're going to be dealing with um, Chemo, and yeah, this is the finale. He finally got the dog, which is which is what his goal was. And uh, I love that the summary says, more importantly, is anyone going to come to his birthday party? <laughs> because I completely forgot that, yeah, that that was the whole point of this first series, was that he wanted people to come to his birthday party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. What's next up for you? Next up for me is Fantastic Four, number 12. 
you've heard of Marvel apes. Now hear Marvel dinosaurs. <laughs> um, yeah, Fantastic Four apparently now is going to travel to a planet where dinosaurs are heroes instead of humans. And, uh, I mean, do I even need to say anything else? Uh, Brachiosaurus, Iron Man, uh, Labiosaurus, Captain Marvel, <laughs> uh, Quit, uh, man, I can't pronounce this. Quitaz, the Col- Black Widow. Um, so yeah, very, very, very fun. I'm excited to see what's going to happen because this is, this is going to be weird. <laughs> and you only have to buy a hundred copies to get, uh, one, uh, Frank Miller virgin variant. <laughs> Why are his knees so fucked up? <laughs> Yikes. Man is struggling. God, it looks literally like looks like pain. he's like laying on a piece of like wood or something. He is in pain. <laughs> Johnny didn't stretch before <laughs> flying. Seriously. This series has been uh, a lot of one shots recently. And it looks like this is another kind of one sh- one off story. They're very fun, but... I do agree with what Lucas said last time, which is they should get back to kind of the main S.H.I.E.L.D. story, like S.H.I.E.L.D. being after them, because I think that's pretty logical. They're still running around, and either trouble follows them or they get into trouble. So, Yeah. Been loving this, though. Really, really have been enjoying this. Um, we're really excited yeah. to see where it's going to go. All right, next up for me is going to be Doctor Strange number 8. Doctor Strange number 7 was a very strong issue. Um, dealing further with this twisted warlord version of Doctor Strange that has found his way back. Um, this cover is fantastic, by the way. I'd just like to mention, <coughs> as have been all the Alex Ross Doctor Strange covers. Um, but yeah, the last issue ended with a bit of a uh, cliffhanger in which Clea has come to the warlord General Strange. It's a fun twist because it leaves us with a couple options. It leaves us either with she is trying to get on his good side to then double cross him, or she truly has truly has seen the light of General Strange's um, character and yeah. wants to actually help him. Like um, she believes that he is the real Doctor Strange. Yeah, yeah. Um, this has been a fantastic arc, and uh, it's been very strong. So I'm excited to see it continue. I think the best part of the series is that we don't ever see Doctor Strange nerfed or weaker than usual. Every single issue, he has always been at full power. Um, and if there's if if he doesn't do something, there is a specific reason why. What is next up for you? Birds of Prey number two. Birds of Prey number one. Phenomenal first issue. We assembled the team. We had an artistic, really interesting style. Love the art. Love the dialogue. Um, we have this like mystery. Um, plus, we do have some time travel shenanigans, which is pretty interesting. We have uh, time travel shenanigans dealing with a character from Gotham Academy, a future version of them. So I'm I'm really hyped. We're going to be learning more about who they have to save. Um, apparently, we have to save Sin, uh, Black Canary's sister, but we don't know much about the details around that. So um, this is such an interesting lineup. I love Zealot. Love Harley Quinn, Black Canary, Cassandra Kane, and Big Barda. Um, really gives you a wide, eclectic variety of personalities. So I'm so, so on board for this. Yeah, first issue was very strong. Kick things off. Got it going. It's moving. And it's going to stay moving. So, yeah, very pleased with how this series is uh, is shaping up. Yeah. My final pick for this week is going to be X-Men number 27. Um I am itching for uh, an update on Cyclops' situation, and um, this should give us that. Um, Obviously, Captain Kakoa is still sowing chaos and doing so uh, successfully. Um, (laughs) Sorry, (laughs) it was very easy. Cyclops, yeah. So Cyclops' response is needed. Um, But yeah, I'm just uh, excited to get more advancement from the Fall of X stuff. Um, and hopefully X-Men can continue to push that forward. Um, last week's X-Books were, were fun, but uh, I think the only one that really pushed things forward was was uh, the Iron Man Iron Man book. So, um, And it was a strong Iron Man issue too. 
but now Iron Man and Emma are, you know, or Hazel Kendall are married, and um, they were able to uh, make that work to get inside the mind of Fei Long. Um, so they are advancing that plot nicely. Now I just want a little update on what's going on here with Stasis and Cyclops and any other mutants that they might have captured uh, here. So, yeah, very excited to open this issue up. Yeah, now very, very hyped. What is your final pick? My final pick is Transformers number one. I'm so fucking excited for this. I am, I, I've genuinely not been so excited for a book in so long. Um, Daniel Warren Johnson is going to be writing and drawing this, and that is fucking so cool. <laughs> um, I love Daniel Warren Johnson. I love his, like, very, like, 80s, 90s style of, like, he, he leans into the nostalgia, but also he writes phenomenally. His art is always super kinetic. Um, and so I, I genuinely, I don't care what this is. I'm so excited to see where this is going to go. Yeah, for sure. It's him and his colorist friend, Mike Spicer, uh, and they are uh, ready to ready to fuck shit up, I'm sure. This is going to be very interesting. Void Rivals hasn't give us, given us a ton of info on the Transformers themselves um, and like where they're standing right now. But as far as I could see from like the previews and stuff, this is kind of going to be them uh, coming back from a hard time from a rough time um optimus is looking pretty battle beaten um pretty damaged and uh yeah this uh will hopefully bring a lot of people back into the transformers uh universe and um get new fans and old fans to pick up this book um but either way i'm glad that they entrusted danny warren johnson to do this book and yeah very excited to crack it open and i love that uh mike spicer is also going to be there because there's one colorist that really keeps up with uh, Daniel Warren Johnson. It's him. Phenomenal work. He he always works with Daniel Warren Johnson, so I'm glad that uh, DWJ was able to bring him along, too. Exactly. Well, this has been our polls for October 4th. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Remember to like, subscribe, support your local comic shop, and read comics. See you.